Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. See, what happened was the traction control, which I thought was off, was not. So when I'm trying to do a sweet donut for the boys, I uh, flipped my TRX. Flipped my TRX. Oh. So Brendan flipped his TRX. On the latest episode of Toontown titled I Flipped My TRX, Brendan explains how he flipped his TRX. And so far, it's looking like the fourth installment on his new channel will probably be the most successful. I mean, it's not every day that you flip your TRX. And in case you can't tell, he could not be more proud of flipping his TRX. He actually did something worth making a video about. Turns out my neck isn't messed up. I got a concussion, arm got a little roughed up, but overall I'm okay. Bad news is my truck's not, it's totaled. So the good news is Brendan's okay. The bad news is this actually happened over a month ago. Let's Go. do this, man. Let's do it. Yeah, I gotta get back to the shop, man. What do you mean? It's my hands smell like, you smell that? You're always it in the like shop oil. now. I know, dude. Yeah, all right, I get it, so, dude. Uh, I got my own shop now, dude. Yeah, it's you it. got a little wound on your arm, too. Well, it looks yeah. like it's infected. It's it is seeping. Being dramatic? It's seeping. It that is wound seeping. is what seeping, the... and Sanaz's mouth just opened. Yeah, it's it's still really? open right now. I can't see it. That looks like it's yeah, seeping. No, it that doesn't look good. Yeah. Oh. Not good. Not fun. Well, that's now, what happens when you Now, since you're talking about the shop, I'm probably going to have to bother you now. I got to get back to my shop, dude. Hey, I'm feeling. I get back to my shop. You gotta get back to your shop. I, do, I got some work to do. Wheel You're doing breaks. more for the truck. Ooh, this for the lighting, different truck. The different other truck's truck. out of commission, other, which other I'll truck. be able to talk the about. Truck. Once insurance gets. Other figured truck. Out. Other truck might be in the hospital right now. Getting just. Other truck might be six feet under. In truck. And hospital. I probably should have been six feet under. Yeah. You saw the video. I saw the video. That's what happens. I feel like insurance will be like, yeah, you got, you have a claim though. I, I talked to him this morning. We're good. Yeah. Geez, he's lucky his insurance agreed to pay him out. You'll see why in a moment when I show you the full clip, but who knows with this guy, right? He's known for making stuff up in the moment to sound cool. And while I agree that he probably needed to wait a little bit until the insurance was sorted out before posting a video, the timing of this upload is definitely suspicious. See, he hadn't uploaded any videos to this new channel for the last six weeks, and the TRX isn't the only truck that he features on Toontown. So I wouldn't be surprised if he knew this video would attract a lot of attention and banked it until the judgment was handed down in his failed lawsuit as a distraction from what's become the biggest L of his career. And it's also no coincidence that Brendan's team are deleting any comments asking about or mentioning the lawsuit this week. I've been keeping tabs of this week's uploads across all of his different channels and in the first few hours of upload there have been comments asking when he's going to talk about his lawsuit except now they're all gone sounds like someone's trying to cover something up so as soon as i saw this video and remembered that he mentioned the crash when it happened six weeks ago it immediately clicked that he was keeping it up his sleeve until the judgment came out so just as a reminder to anyone new here or if you missed my full breakdown of his lawsuit, Brendan sued a smaller YouTube channel called Uniqueness two years ago for using clips from The Fighter and the Kid in his commentary videos. And this whole time, he's been lying to his fans by telling him it's a defamation case, but I revealed that it was actually a copyright case and explained all the details earlier this week after the summary judgment was handed down in favor of the defendant, a guy who was self-representing with the assistance of a rogue ghost phantom lawyer. Nobody knows who this lawyer is. It will forever remain a mystery. True story. So if you don't believe me, go and check out my breakdown video. But here we are witnessing one of the funniest things Brendan's ever done. Just take a look at some of the comments on his TRX video. I thought you were going to give up on comedy. This was hilarious. Spending so much money tuning this truck and then crashing it almost immediately is the funniest thing he's ever done. This is just like his stand-up comedy. Bupper has finally found his niche, just needs to make a video where he totals a new vehicle every week, and he will be back on top of the YouTube world. I didn't know Bupper had a new special out. This is comedy at its finest. And so how did all of this go down, and how exactly did he come to flip his beloved TRX? Well, as usual, the episode starts out with some modifications, and then he took it off-road to test it out. Now remember, Brendan is a beginner off-roader. He has no experience handling high-powered modified vehicles in an off-road environment. But due to his commitment to the Dunning-Kruger effect and his love of trugs, he found himself out in the open with an absolute weapon. Well, we made it. We're at Johnson Valley. We're in the middle of 
fucking nowhere, but this is where you come to put your truck to the fucking limits. We've done it all. You guys have seen it. We got the King Shocks, Kibby Tech, Alcon brakes. We need to be able to stop. We got the overkill tuning going on there. We got the Innovate wheels, Toyo tires. Now it's time to take this street princess and get her dirty. Let's go. So you can see just from these clips how heavy the TRX is and how much movement it has due to the raised softer suspension. Now, I know a little bit about this stuff, having done a little bit of off-roading over the years and a little bit of physics in high school as well, not to mention some basic common sense. But with these types of off-roading setups, you have a lot of weight combined with a higher ride height with softer suspension, obviously a lot of power as well. And in the wrong hands, this can lead to disaster. Just for a quick comparison, think of a Formula One car, for example, which is the complete opposite. They're very low to the ground. They have incredibly stiff suspension. They're much lighter in weight, as well as an incredible amount of downforce. This creates a lot less body roll and weight transfer, resulting in a lot more grip on the tarmac. But for off-roading, you want to have more freedom of movement so you can clear obstacles and get through more harsh, unforgiving terrain, similar to rally driving, right? If the suspension is too stiff and the ride height is too low, you'll end up just sliding everywhere because there's nothing to absorb the weight of the vehicle. Pretty basic stuff, right? So when Brendan decided to leave the dirt road and go for the softer silt road, well, it was obvious that it wasn't going to end well. All right, guys, we changed locations. We're at the silt road here now. This is the money shot. So you notice this is finer than sand. It's like, it's so fine. So the issue with that is you can't stop. Once you get going, you got to just pedal to the metal and just march through. Otherwise, I'm going to get stuck and this will be a really sad video. So uh, I'm just going to blast through this thing. It should be an epic shot. We'll see. So these are some pretty cool shots here. This kind of off-roading is so much fun. There's a lot more movement, a lot more resistance, and you've got to put in more work to follow the path of least resistance. And like Brendan said himself, you can't lose momentum. You can't take your foot off the gas. Otherwise, you'll get bogged down, which makes it incredibly difficult to get going again, especially if you're an inexperienced weekend warrior like Brendan is. So when you try to power your way out of it, you just kick up sand and sink deeper, pretty much like Brendan standing up comedy career. Now, this right here is so typical of everything he does. He'll try something, it won't work out, so he'll try again and again and again until he's exhausted all possible failures. It reminded me of Murphy's Law, which states, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Or is it the other way around? It's hard to tell. I've heard it both ways. Anyway, Brendan refused to accept his latest failure as a sign from God and decided to push on. All right, that sucked. We got our asses kicked and it's finally time to go home with our tail between our legs. I thought, you know what? Let's get the out of the desert. But you know what? One more cool shot. We're out here. Why not? What's the worst that can happen? Starting emergency call to the SOS service provided by the manufacturer. To cancel, press the SOS or cancel button. Starting SOS call. I actually think he handled that pretty well once he realized he'd rolled over. I think it's easy to criticize people in these situations when you're watching it back in hindsight, but the way he took a quick moment to accept what had happened, he took a look around, and then he scrambled to get out of there, I'd say he acted pretty quickly and just got the hell out of there, which is the right thing to do. You don't know what's going on outside, if there's a fire or if the car hadn't settled yet, so I'm not going to bag him for that. But from the limited angles available in this video, it looked to me like the front end found some grip and grabbed, and then the traction control started cutting the power to the rear wheels, sending all of that weight into the suspension, which just soaked it all up and rolled over. I don't know, maybe some of you watching have more experience than I do and saw it differently, but I think Brendan's right about the traction control being a contributing factor. And it was good to see so much support for him in the comment section. I found this one comment from a fan that said, Head up, bupper. We all love you. Thick Boy Nation stands behind you, brother. Which received absolutely zero likes. But there are a couple of other astute observations from his fans as well. More people need to retake elementary school physics. 
lifted truck, super soft ground, traction control on, attempts donut. Yeah, I think that one pretty much sums it up. But let's hear from the man himself about his assessment of what happened. Yep, I crashed my TRX. It's all fun and games, and we had some fun with it. Here's the thing. Thank God I didn't get seriously hurt. Got a concussion. Those suck. Definitely need another one, but it could be a whole lot worse. I've had every car in the world exotic to me. My favorite vehicle I've ever owned is that TRX. And... The bottom line is, at 40, I realized I'm impatient. I have friends all over in the off-road world. Ryan at Kibbe Tech offered to go with me. My boy Ramsey at King Shocks offered to go with me. BJ Baldwin, one of the best truck racers in the world, offered to take me. But I was impatient. And when Alex do it next week, I went, no, I need it now. And I went, and I ruined my truck. Because I'm not a professional. I have a lot to learn. And this sucks, man. All that work I put into it. All the companies, that brands that jumped on board, it's all ruined. As I'm flipping, I remember thinking to myself, you have kids, man. I bring my son Tiger with me everywhere. I want to learn about cars, trucks. I want him into, you know, motorsports. So he's always with me. But this one time, his mom goes, nope, he has school, don't bring him. Boom. Thank God he didn't come. So uh, I really messed up, man. And thank God my son wasn't with me. Wow, that was actually a really self-aware and mature breakdown from Bapa. I can't help but think that if he applied that same level of critical thought to every other aspect of his life, he wouldn't be the most hated man on the internet. But anyway, that's my breakdown of Brendan's latest attempt to control the narrative and cover up his epic failure of a lawsuit. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Big shout out to my regulars. Thanks for joining me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider jumping on board so you don't miss any of my uploads. That's it from me. I'll catch you all in the next one. Uh, I don't know. I need a new hobby. I, I can't. Psych!